Invader 1 here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Now, if you guys remember the last episode, basically what happens, from what I remember, uh, I think we invited Natsuki to come over to our house on Friday to bake cupcakes, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. I could be wrong. So, yeah, let's get straight into this. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll actually act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. Wow, <laughs> she might be a little clingy. Okay, we don't know that for sure. We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emojis and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. I mean, yeah, it's Natsuki. I mean, that's like literally telling Adam Sandler to not be funny. But putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club earlier the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, it is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Probably not. I, de I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like, when, like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Oh! <laughs> we are actually in our room. I mean, look at this! She has like a giant cow and like the yellow bird from Angry Birds. That's hilarious. Sayori? Hi, rabbit! I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize that some stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had over the, for years now. <laughs> If you come over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Wait, how does she know that? Have you been watching me, Sayori? Have you been spying on me in the bushes? It's a little creepy. Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Yeah, I remember that. She left early the other day because she wasn't feeling well. Monica told me. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry for assuming that you're some sort of creep who spies in the bushes with their binoculars. Unless you do do that, then we got a serious problem here. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Natsuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Okay, something is seriously going on here and I'm like really worried right now. Sari stares in the random direction. 
Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Sari smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Rabbit. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me all at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. Whoa, okay. You're going on a bit of a tangent here, Sayori. You're, you're, you're honestly... <laughs> you're honestly freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> Sayori! I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. <laughs> Sari gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Rabbit. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Oh, God. Is there, is there, there's actually something wrong with her. Oh, my God. Is she okay? Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Rabbit? Yes, because I don't know! I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Oh my god, she's depressed? Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. Oh my god. She, she really hit it well. Like, depression's like really a serious thing nowadays, cause that's how most people die and some people don't get over it. She really hit it well so that no one would know. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Don't say that! That's gonna make her feel worse! Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do is tell me. It's really not an easy thing for someone to come out and say it. You don't understand at all, Rabbit. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. 
It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat's being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> you're right that I don't understand. I don't understand what you're feeling at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Rabbit. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped me is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was pushing my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah! Rabbit! Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you've convinced me to join the literature club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Rabbit! Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No! Don't do this to me! Please, don't do this! Rabbit! I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I, I don't... Dude, some of the things you're saying right now, I don't think it's helping. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sari finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Rabbit. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But... Your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary, too. Sari lets go of me. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um... Uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Sari wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole d d d blah Getting emotional as I speak. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Natsuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do 
do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sari shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry about me too much. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look f I look forward to it. Oh my god. That is like... To know that one of your friends in real life if they could have that problem, I don't know how I would feel about that. I would really try my hardest to help them in whatever way I could. But it'd be really hard to tell sometimes because most people can hide it really well. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki is about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying about it too much. And we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I spend a few minutes back at home anxiously waiting for Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Oh my god. She is, uh... She's not in her school uniform. I don't know what else to say about that. She has a little kitty on her shirt. That's adorable. Sup? Hi. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform today threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting to comparison. Oh yeah, she's wearing a skirt too, I just noticed. I can't really see behind the thing. What is it? I don't know what button to press for that. Oh, jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already. It's going to be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyways, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki is carrying a large bag that's probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You brought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly saying that, rather than something snarky like she usually does. It could be that she is a little different outside of school, after all. Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. We're already in the kitchen, man. What? You're not gonna offer me- offer to take this heavy bag for me? Well, I mean, I don't see any bags. And you seem pretty strong compared to how little you are. So yes, I'll take the bag. Where's your hospitality, rabbit? Come on. Since when did I get to be the gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. Ugh. This is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I don't know how it weighs, but yeah, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> I see that now. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. You have completely taken over every single ounce of impressedness from my body to you. Okay. It seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? Yes, that is the exact reason. I can't do this, she's so cute. You jerk. Okay, well, now I take back what I said about you being adorable. 
Atsuki hits a fist into my chest. Really? Okay. Hey, hey! Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Huh? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. Okay, yeah, I can see that being one of those things where people enjoy to do. But, ah, jeez, never mind. What are you making me say? I didn't make you say anything. You're the one that started the conversation. Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. Well, good thing for you, I know the basics of baking. Probably a little bit more, but probably the basics, that's probably about it. <laughs> what? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey! Now you are treating me like a kid. I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and a We're really going for that word again? Mature and blank figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Ah... Uh, Natsuki catches her words and face turns red. Natsuki, are you okay? Forget it! I'm not my... I cannot do her voice for the life of me. I didn't say anything! I should apologize. Huh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Uh, how would you know that anyway? Just trust me on this one. Yeah, uh, guys are into a lot of freakishly weird stuff. But I wouldn't know about that, I would just... I watch a lot of How I Met Your Mother, okay? Jeez. Gross. Hey, How I Met Your Mother is a good show, okay? Just because that Barney just keeps jumping from girl to girl to girl to girl to girl. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty gross. What is that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Rabbit. That is not my weakness. That is one of my many other weaknesses. But not the most effective. Natsuki smiles. Divis 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 Natsuki smiles. Please spare me. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm fighting back. But she's satisfied for now. Finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flowers, spilled fluids, and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixture isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking skill. Rabbit, where did you put the food coloring? The batter is going to be in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. Ooh, ooh. That sounds really cool. I love it. I love how, like, when bakers, they just, like, put food coloring and it just makes the cupcake a different color. It's, it's so cool. 
That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Ah, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on! You're not putting any heart into this at all? Can you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun! I'm not really sure what Natsuki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separating the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if just looking at it makes everyone's eyes light up. Like the ones you made at the fir at my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monika's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah, maybe I will use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Huh? The icing's still lumpy. Are you even trying? No, I'm just sitting in a corner playing on my Game Boy Advance. Well, yeah. It's just taking a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Natsuki grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the poop out of it. <laughs> After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger up in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly do the same, too. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, hey? Are we Canadian now? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger toward the bowl. Don't make me beat you next! This is really weird. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with her all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki pulling me causes me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Gross! You got on my face! It's just icing! I'm pretty sure we all washed our hands before we started baking. Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Uh, she tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Oh, I get that all the time. Like, sometimes, like, icing would get on your face. It re I really don't like to use a napkin. I like to try and lick it as much off as possible. Jeez. Uh, you know what? Take this! Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. You wish. I'm faster. Really? Are you? I don't think so. <laughs> I grab her wrist with my hand before she reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Oh my god, what are we doing? <laughs> Stop! Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to that. You do that to me all the time, you know. Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You should, you really shouldn't just, if that blah, can't speak. <laughs> you really shouldn't tease a girl like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this, either. 
I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking the icing off. Oh my god, you barely know her and yet you're doing this! This is hilarious! What? What? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, she's too adorable right now. Did, did you seriously just... Uh... Natsuki's so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Rabbit, you really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls unless you really like them. You know that, right? Well, isn't this just awkward? What kind of question is she asking me? Just like that? I mean, dude, look at the way you're holding her, and you literally just licked icing off her finger, and you only known her for about, like, what, six days? I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breathes. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Uh... Let's just move past that awkward moment, okay? Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? Yeah, it's probably the cupcakes, you dummy! I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. <coughs> no wonder! You left the dirty tray in here, dummy! How could you make a mistake like that? Yeah, even I don't make that mistake, dude. You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistake. Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on the top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment has already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and to continue the, with the icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, that smells so good! The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet smelling warm air fills room. I love that smell of fresh baked goods directly straight out of the oven. I love that. Look at how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add icing. Not like you'll need to tell me that. I brought some decorating stuff so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have the nozzle that will help, that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can make flowers. We probably won't be using this time, though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin, so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. But you can also use it to write stuff on cake. Like, happy birthday or whatever. That actually gives me an idea. Huh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We can make it more literature themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcake based on a word they like. Uh... Huh... I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid, but that's actually a really cute idea, so... <laughs> Maybe I'm getting it from you. Wh what's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute! Have you looked at yourself? <laughs> You're freaking adorable! I just want to make you into a cupcake! Come on! We're not at school, nobody's judging. You can you can't dress and act like this and not me expect to think you're cute. Well, well 
Natsuki voice trails off. Same with you. Huh? Did you say something? N no, nothing! Let's just do the icing! Natsuki picks up the piece and fastens a nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about before, Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing and then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all aside to admire their our work. Ah uh, yes, don't they all look beautiful? Especially how I can't see them. You know, if I were to actually write a word on a cupcake, it would probably be, For the love of God, eat me. Look at how pretty they are. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Ugh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but... My dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. <laughs> Sarah is the exact opposite in that regard. If she were here, we'd probably be down by 10 cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Already? Yeah, it's actually... Wow, it's actually 2.30. Is this really the time you have dinner? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man, what does that even mean? As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, then you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me that way she listens to you. Ah, uh, yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me, but at that point it feels like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, Natsuki is already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that. Did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I mean, you did quote-unquote get closer, if you know what I'm saying. I think Barty might misinterpret that. He might change the story along the way, but... Yeah, he would definitely do that. Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki. Huh? What you said before about not always having this chance, it doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun bacon can be like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over anytime, okay? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere... Um... Do you... Really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah. I want to spend more time with you. She really does seem like a really cool person. Like, I would mainly most relate to her. Rabbit? I thought you only cared about getting this done. Uh, I'm sorry. I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Whoa. What is happening? She's getting closely to me involuntarily. She's never done that. Who is this? This is probably a fake Natsuki. Can we... No, uh, uh, Natsuki suddenly gets closer to me. Wait, Natsuki? Standing inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. 
I feel her fingers gently clutching at my sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Oh my god, is she gonna kiss us? She's gonna kiss us. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching her eyes filled my vision along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? She's giving me like a death stare. Really, it's very intimidating too. My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breath against me. I felt it for a while now. <sighs> Natsuki suddenly jumps back. Yep, there she is. There she is. There, she's back to normal. Okay, false alarm, people. It's a false alarm. S Sayori! And it's Sayori. Oh. That's a little awkward. Huh? Ah. Hi, rabbit. Hi, Sayori. We weren't doing anything. We were just giving each other a hug goodbye. That's what that was. We weren't about to kiss or anything, if that's what you're thinking. Yes, now. There's... Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, rabbit. I just stopped by to say hi. Ah, uh, well... Y you should come, come a lot earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyways, later. Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori, uh... So that was awkward. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, hi, hi. I thought she wasn't... Yeah, yes, I was about to say that. I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki. How close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Rabbit? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I just disappear. Oh. Please, yes, please, Sayori. Don't say that. You don't really mean that. That's just the depression talking. Whatever you think, it's definitely not your own thought. It's true, Rabbit. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have wasted your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica, wait, hold on a second. What did she say? Monica was right about what? Sayori? What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't a burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sayori looks away. I put my hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Rabbit. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori... It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Rabbit, I like you so much that I want to... I can't say that word. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't know what to say about that. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. 
I slide my hand down her arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm gonna give you. Sayori, I love you or you'll always be my dearest friend. If we say that we love her, then, okay, yeah, sure, then she might like that, but then she's gonna think that's not how we actually feel. And if we say that we're her dearest friend, she's gonna be heartbroken. She said she really, really likes us. That can only mean that she is, I think, probably in love with us. I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna... It's not that I... It's not like I don't love her. It's, I don't... I would love her as a friend. I just don't share those emotions with her. I don't want to break her heart like that, but I'm gonna have to. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult things right now, but... Please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. I... I see. Sari forces a, a smile through an incredibly painful expression. <laughs> Is this what it feels like? To get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Look, it's... It's not that I... It's just I don't feel that way about her. And I don't want to make her feel that bad, but I can't lie to her. She would figure that out eventually. And plus her mind would make her think that. Either way, I really don't see it going well. Sayori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. Your feelings are not stupid. They're important. I know you're right. I know this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do make me better than anyone, Rabbit. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sarah's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. What is she? Ah! Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Okay, why did she do that? And, and she's gone. Okay. Sari looks over her shoulders and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can con comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. 
I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Okay, yeah, um... I'm a little bit confused as to why she screamed, but... I kind of do know why. Because that's probably not the answer that she wanted to hear. Especially in her state of mind. So I'm gonna save. And... Uh, main menu. So... Yeah, wow. Uh... That was in a really intense episode. I think... Overall, I did not expect that to happen. Like, how... I, I kind of figured something was wrong with Sayori during the beginning of the playthrough, but... I didn't think it would be that bad. Especially seeing how, as we observe, the way the character treats her every day. Not terribly, but like as if he doesn't really care about her. Man, I really hope that things get better on, but I I hope it does, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. So yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club, let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this episode, then scream at that like button like the true invaders you are. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. GB.